Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. I'd like to introduce to you our presenter and show ambassador, Andrew Pike. Drawing on his experience in visual merchandising prior to his career in interior design, Andrew will show you how to create impactful window and in-store displays at minimal cost. From effective color palettes to accessible prop sourcing, this presentation will help you understand the creative principles Andrew uses to draw consumers to display, tell a story, and create interest in your products. Without further delay, Andrew, let's begin. Thank you so much, Allison. I appreciate the lovely introduction. Hi, everybody. I'm Andrew Pike, and as Allison mentioned, I'm the Can Gift Show Ambassador, and this is a presentation that I originally gave in the August show in Toronto called Wonderful Windows. Now, I know all of you have stores and retail outlets that probably have some sort of a window, and you'd like to do something lovely with it. And we all know that that can be time consuming and it can be challenging, but these are some tips and tricks for creating effective window displays that won't break the bank. Because ultimately, you want to have the best retail space possible, but you can't sink all of your profits into the windows. So here's just a little bit about me to get started if you're not familiar. I am the owner of Andrew Pike Interiors. It's a small boutique interior design firm in downtown Toronto. We cater mostly to higher end residential pro projects, but we do do some commercial and uh, other products. We do corporate branding. We do marketing and package design consultations. If you do you think I look familiar? It's probably because you've seen me on the Maryland Dennis Show. I'm one of their roster of decor experts, and I also do presenting and hosting things. But here's a few other little tidbits about me. I am a proud East Coaster. I was born in Cape Breton, Nova Scotia, but we moved when I was three years old to St. John's, Newfoundland. So if anyone asks, I will proudly tell you that I'm a Newfoundlander. I moved to Toronto to go to school when I was 17 years old, and shortly after completing my schooling, I lived in Germany for five years, where my first career was that of a musical theater performer. So I was in big productions of um, Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat and Starlight Express, which is the musical on roller skates. So after I finished that career, I came back and uh, got back into the design world, and I've been here ever since. Our design philosophy is fairly simple. We want to give each client a personally tailored space. So you can see our philosophy on your screen, but what we do is we really want to listen to our clients. I have heard from other people who've worked with designers before that they've not been given options, that they have were presented with one thing and told this is how it should be, and while you're hiring us for our expertise and you want us to narrow down the chaos of choice, I want to be sure we're giving you what we want. So I always say, my job is not to do what I want, my job is to do what you want in the best possible way. Last year we did enter the retail landscape with an online shop, so I had a lot of questions from people who had seen me on TV or had seen my work and they were interested in how I accessorize. I'm definitely a maximalist. I'm not a minimalist at all, uh, although I can do that when it's requested, but people hire me because they generally like my layered style. So for me, layering is all about accessories. They're very, very important. And I wanted to have some things that in, uh, exemplified my style and what I did. So we have a custom range of pillows, um, antlers are definitely one of my signature. I use them in all different versions all the time. So we have an antler section. I wanted beautiful candles. When I'm at home, I have uh, candles burning all the time. I love subtle scent. It's very, very important to me. So I custom blended a selection of beautiful soy-based candles. And we have since gotten into a small jewelry range as well with some pins and a beautiful antler cuff. And if you wanted to see any of those things, it's all online at pikeshop.ca. So now, enough about me, let's talk about the windows. This is a great heading because trios are so important in design and decorating work and equally so in window displays. Why are odd numbers so visually appealing? Well, they've long been used by designers as magical numbers and we always say use things in threes because unless a pair is symmetrical and perfectly balanced, three of them helps to create a vignette. So even numbers will create symmetry, but odd numbers create interest. 
and odd numbers force your eye to move around the grouping. But we always recommend there should be some variation in shape, height, or size. So when you're working with three things, have a large, a medium, and a small, um, or different heights, different textures, make sure that there's interest in that. This is a fantastic image to illustrate a couple of points about the threes. Here are three mannequins, which are beautifully done, but they're only half mannequins. We're going to talk more about that in a section a little bit later, but it's a lovely way to display fashion. Those three shelves with the complementary shoes and bag are very important. They are just planks of wood with holes drilled in them to create little shelves or swings, if you will, and they're really, really effective. This also sells the entire outfit in one shot. Here's another great example for fashion. If you have fashion but you don't have mannequins, this is a fabulous opportunity. If you're either a bit artistic, you could sketch these yourself. If you knew someone who was, you could sketch them on big pieces, big sheets of paper. Um, if not, you could have them cut out of vinyl, or you could go to a printer and have them printed. The other great thing about that is that they would be reusable, so you could pin the clothes to them and take them down and roll them away, and there's very little storage required. I think this is absolutely brilliant in terms of fashion uh, with the old photographs paired with the dresses. So the Hollywood movie stars and just the gowns that they may or may not have been wearing. It's so romantic, it's so simple. Once again, that's a bust form on a stand behind the picture. And those photographs you could easily get printed off at a print shop and roll them up and store them away. They would have multiple uses in the future. You could frame them, you could pin them up on boards. They don't have to be just for that one installation. Like I said earlier, antlers have always been a big thing for me. So here's some sets of three. So we've gone with six deer heads. It's obviously very winter, but it's very, very effective. And you'll notice that the majority of the window, so two thirds of the window is devoted to just the styling. The actual product is only a very small third, but your eyes immediately drawn into that because it's so effective and clean and it pulls you over to the grouping of fashion. So remember, when you're working with trios, simplicity is key. Keep it clean and organized, and always play with size, shape, and scale. Everyday objects. Now this is fun because we all have stuff in our lives that we need to see through a different lens to see how it could be used differently. So I say, oh, this old thing? Everyday objects can virtually be anything because the powerful thing about them is when you take something and use it in repetition, it keeps the eyes moving. It's very, very effective. It's very easy to reuse items from other displays. So, you know, look at what you already have and then find a new way to use them. It can be as little work or as much work as you like, meaning you can go whole hog with it and spend a whole lot of time painting it, bedazzling it, taping it, striping it, or you can just simply use what you have. And it looks organized and effective with very little effort. So this is a fantastic example of that. These are just paint brushes that have all been painted in similar colors and held up with painter's tape. The beautiful thing about this, you could be selling paint. That could be the product that you're selling. You could be selling the brushes. You could be selling the tape. You may not be sending, uh, selling any of them. Maybe what you want to do is create the message that it's time for an update. How do we affordably do that? With paint. Oh, and here are some other projects that we sell that would help you with that in your own lives. A broader example of that would be this anthropology window. They're an incredibly innovative and creative company. If you're looking for inspiration, they're definitely a go-to. They hire artists to become their visual merchandisers. So they're looking for really creative people to break things down. So again, we know anthropology sells mostly fashion with some home goods. But this is all just bits and pieces of furniture. So again, there's the backs of chairs, there's legs of tables, there's all different things that are broken down and discarded. You have an old chair at home and it's missing a leg and you throw it out, well, it could become part of a window like this. This is great, it's really showing uh, a broader version of the same window. 
how the chair that they are actually selling was built and constructed. So all of the furniture parts there. Just on a concrete wall, you can use the colors that are really hot for that season, or if you're trying to evoke a feeling, paint them the color that you, you want to achieve. So if it's winter and you want it to feel very crisp, it could all be white. If it's spring, they could all be very brightly colored. But again, a beautiful backdrop for just a simple chair. Even mundane objects that we think, hmm, these really don't have a place in a window. Well, brooms, you're selling cleaning products. You've, you've got to show it. You've got to create some want and desire from it. I mean, a Halloween-themed window with simple orange backdrop, some black vinyl birds, and uh, a title that says Witch Broom. I mean, you can almost see the Wicked Witch of the West sitting on one of those and heading off into the sky. It's really interesting and creative, and it's using the product that you already have. This is a beautiful way to sell umbrellas because those are simply pendant lamps that have been wrapped in Dacron and cotton batting to create clouds. Now, the illumination in them is really important. That draws the eye at night. It gives it a, another layer of depth. Um, it throws shadow into the space. But simply getting a suspended bulb package from a place like Ikea with uh, a regular shade and you wrap it all up, you really can't go wrong trying to create a rain cloud and it looks soft and ethereal and it's very, very pretty. You want to be very careful that you don't have any batting around the bulb itself, that everything is on the exterior because you don't want to create a fire hazard. The other thing to do is to be sure to use an LED bulb or a fluorescent bulb that is not going to create any heat. So these are pool noodles. I think this is an absolutely fabulous installation. These are things that are very, very affordable and just to create something beautiful and interesting. It's a wonderful way to do it. This is perfect for spring. It's perfect for summer. It's perfect for Pride Week. There are so many uses for a rainbow of pool noodles. It's basically endless. And when you create something like that in a window, you don't need to do that much more in the window to draw attention. But even if you're selling, using the products that you're selling, this is so beautifully effective, just simple loaves of bread. So the bakery is not trying to put all of their products. They're not trying to show you that everything is available. We sell croissants, we sell donuts, we sell muffins. They're just showing you the bread, and it's really, really pretty. If you're working with food, obviously, you want to be careful because you want to make sure that it's uh, preserved and not going to be moldy. So anything you would look at, you would make sure you go online and Google how to make sure when you're putting in a window that it's, it's not going to rot. So everyday objects, remember, there's strength in numbers. Paint will always unify a display, and it does not need to be new things. So mannequin parts. I touched on that a little bit earlier, but here's the interesting thing. When we're working with mannequins, people will often say, oh, you know, her hands are broken, or we lost her left foot, just get rid of it. But there's no need to do that, because there's still so many parts left that you can work with. So limbs and hands are a great alternative to hooks, hangers, and props. Mannequin parts are an artistic way to present and hold product. So we often think of a mannequin in one way only, in that if, if he or she is fully dressed, then that's how you use it. Well, we don't need her entire body to be fully dressed to use it effectively. Maybe we just use the hand, maybe we just use the foot, maybe we use the head. And so when you're thinking like that, that cuts down on the waist as there's no way to throw away an incomplete, incomplete piece. So this, for example, is a beautiful way to display jewelry. Often when we're thinking of jewelry displays, we think inside the box and think, oh, I need you know, velvet trays, I need risers, I need uh, ring displays. Well, this is just great. That's a simple champagne glass uh, you know, filled with some jewelry and one hand displaying even more of that jewelry. And I love how it's reaching into the glass. It indicates that there's a want and a desire for those pieces and the shadow play on the back wall is an added bonus. Here they are using, using to hold things. We would think if we had glasses, you'd want a head to put them on. Well, not necessarily. These are just random hands that you'd mount into a wall and use them effectively as a small shelf to hold the product. Here again, fabulous idea. 
one leg and one hand coming out of a wall indicating that the mannequin is in motion. He or she is walking away and the shoes are being dragged behind him. The shoes are not even on the foot, but in that white box, it really, all those strings just draw the eye right down to the product that you're trying to sell, which are the shoes. I love this image again, a blue box to highlight that red leather bag and the blue arms pushing it out, signifying that it's the owner, and then all the desire and the want from everyone else who wants to have that bag. It really just pushes the eye in and thinks, oh, that's a desirable piece. I want to have that too. I think this is brilliantly done, uh, simple cutout. We know how that satchel or tote is carried. It's carried by its handle, and all we needed to indicate that was the hand of a mannequin. The cutout, of course, would be a little bit more complicated to do, um, but again, it's just drywall and a simple box and paint it white, and you could have that built into your window and change that bag out endlessly. So here's a collection of mannequin parts. I'm sure if we took them all down, we could put a full mannequin back together. But again, it's thinking outside the box. It's thinking, I have all these clothes and I want to show something that's gonna you know, really draw attention. Well, deconstructing those mannequins and having a hand hold the shoe or a wrist hold the bag or a hand hold the pants um, is an interesting way to show all of the parts of an outfit and a trend without actually having it all put together. So mannequin parts, they do not need to be the whole mannequin. They can tell very interesting stories and it's also something that can be painted over and over again for different color seasons and trends. So color blocking. As a designer, we're always saying, you know, the cheapest and most effective way to change your space is with paint. So by going to a $50 gallon of paint in a couple of hours, you can instantly change a room. So take advantage of your color. So just keeping items in the same color, grouping them together, can create a really effective look. You can use that against white, you can use it against black. Um, there's any number of ways to do this, and I'm going to show you how. Colors are also an easy way to acknowledge a holiday, a season, a feeling, or a theme. So of course, we all associate red Hearts with Valentine's Day. We all associate green trees with the holidays. There are certain things that we can do uh, to encourage seasons and themes. And it's also a fun way to demonstrate which items match and how they would look together. So sometimes people will look at something and say, I really like that, but I don't know if that color goes. Well, if you introduce that into a story, a color story, people understand the entire process better. Now this is really taking that to the extreme. This is a grouping of items that have all been painted exactly the same color. From the chairs to the fashion to the accessories to the lighting, it's all a beautiful pale pink. I think this is incredibly beautiful. Um, and the, the one thing to do or keep in mind about this is you could take a pile of things that you found at a thrift store, spray paint or paint them all out the same color, for the three or four items you have in the same color in the store and integrate them into it. And all of a sudden you've created a very cohesive artistic window. But if you don't want to go quite as conceptual as that, here's playing on a theme. So the millennial pinks are still running very, very strong in the design world. And this is showing you that color and then similar tones that go with it. So you've got a rose gold decanter, you've got um, some vases and bowls, but that's highlighted with you know, a pale blue lamp or a little yellow trinket dish. It's all working in soft pastel colors and it shows the product in an interesting light. This is a great window and probably a little more realistic. It's obviously pushing pink and it's pushing the idea that pink is a hot trend in fashion and so is floral and ruffles and pleats and detail. So that's really highlighting the fashion. Um, but it's a simple vanity that looks really, really glamorous with the marquee lights around it and a, a bunch of things that are all similarly toned. So if you were pulling in all of those similar colors, you'd be able to create a window like this as well. 
this is very clever because again, going back to the mannequins, we often think that if we have to merchandise fashion, it either has to be on a rack or it has to be on a mannequin or folded on a table. Here's a story that's telling us, you know, shades of blue are really hot for this summer and there is also a mannequin stuck in behind there who's actually a person, I believe, holding the purse for the purpose of the shot. But just the clean, light wood, all of this wood strapping would be something that would be very affordable to get at a big box lumber store. Or you may even be able to pull it off some of your pallets, your shipping pallets that you've gotten, or some of your packaging off if there's light wood in the framing. Because it's not about the quality. It's all about the beauty of the garments that are on them. And here, again, a very, very simple yet effective window, just one blue umbrella. It kind of draws your eyes in. It's a, a pale gray space. It feels kind of stormy and moody, which would indicate that's the kind of feeling that you're going to need an umbrella for. And here are these, all of these beautiful things kind of tousled around. So sometimes you don't need um, a lot in a window other than your product and a coat of paint. This is fantastic. I absolutely love it. That royal blue indicating night and the bright yellow indicating the lamplight because when we think of things like this, it's important to also realize when we think of night, we think it's black, but it's not necessarily black. It can be gray, it can be blue, it can be shades of purple, it can be shades of amber. So here they're really playing up the blue to indicate darkness and night. And then light is not just white, light always has a tint to it. Is it yellow? Is it pink? Is it blue? And so here they're playing up the yellow. So a beautiful painted backdrop with um, a bench with some fashion layered over top of it. Um, you'll notice it's also interesting that they took the light down the side of the walls and also cut it through half of the bench, which I think is a really nice touch. Uh, this was a window that came out around the time of Occupy Wall Street um, and the resistance in the world to uh, big corporate greed. So here they're using um, all of their product to indicate, you know, this is the color story. They've used a few signs, which would be very easy. They've used some coy words, gift for the 99% for the I love. But you'll notice that the color that they've used is green. And in the United States, the color of money is green. So it was a very powerful choice for them to do that. And when you look at what it would have cost to do this window, um, those shelving uh, units are crates. The product is all theirs. And a couple of signs that they could have painted onto canvas, painted onto cardboard. Um, when you're thinking about that movement and how this happened, everyone had Bristol board or cardboard signs. So it would be totally fitting just to use cardboard and paint them yourselves or use a big marker to make that come to life. This is a great grouping as well. Um, very, very color blocked, purple, green, yellow, and pink, and so simple. So all they've done is chosen those colorways for the products that they have in the store and then accented it with the paper lanterns, which are a very, very simple thing. It's a little bit hard to see, but there is drop cloth behind it. Um, and it's all been spatter painted in that color as well. And I think that would just be so much fun to uh, lay that out in your driveway and spatter paint that cloth. A great project for you and the kids. Um, and then to assemble this window and, and then everybody had a part in making it happen. So remember, when you're color blocking, paint is cheap and very, very effective. Paint can be used infinitely, so it's not to say that you've painted it now, you'll never paint it again. You probably will and you probably should. And group similar tones together for effect. Paneling. Now, this comes out of my design business because we use paneling all the time. It's, it's a more traditional, transitional look, but you can, there's very modern versions of it as well. But I love it because it layers and it creates interest. So panels are something that when you build them on walls, ceilings, floors, they, it's a very high-end look. But it can also be very homey and cozy. Um, it's easier on the eyes than a stark white wall, so it adds some layers and some interest. You can control the cost because you can decide, I'm going to do a lot of elaborate paneling, or I'm just going to do very simple, single panels. It's whatever you want it to be. You can repaint it 
uh, for a whole different look. It's amazing what paint can do. We've already talked about that. And it's not necessarily difficult to install. So this is a great example. Now this is uh, obviously a slightly more complicated look. There's raised panels, there's chair rails, but it's a beautiful white space with the word clothes on it uh, and a pile of clothes. And it just draws your eye in, but it's different from a, um, a blank white box. It has some richness, it has some elegance. There's something formal about it, which would indicate to me that the clothes have that casual formality about them as well. This is another one, four separate panels. Um, beautiful to feature individual vignettes. So they provide a backdrop that's almost like creating a frame behind the fashion in front of them. Those suspended uh, leaves over top for fall, it's all about layers, it's all about loading up on those fall colors, and they could easily be made out of cardboard or construction paper. So this is obviously a little more elaborate. The two-tone is important to note. This is a window for Dior. Um, so there are actually two mannequins. It isn't a mirror. It looks like it's meant to be a reflection, but it's not. But the two-tone element of painting the wall one color and the molding another immediately creates a more dramatic effect. Another Dior window now. This has the view that you are looking at it from the top, but it's actually built so you're looking at it from the front. So this would, of course, be an incredibly complicated installation. The math um, and the engineering on that would be, in my mind, a total nightmare, but you can see just how effective this is. It really gives you depth and creates an entirely different feeling. So again, back to a simpler version, paneling that's just a white wall, and do something whimsical with it. You know, the desk has been tipped on its side, and it's obviously suspended from a cable um, from the trussing above, and the way they've hidden that cable is with the strings of the balloons. So it's a, a really, really effective way to show something whimsical and different. So remember, paneling, it can be simple or elaborate. Slab doors make the perfect backdrop. If you get some cheap slab doors at a big box store, you can panel right over top, move them around, use them in a window, put them in a base, use them as a freestanding display. They're endlessly useful. One tone is subtle and two tones is dramatic. Stencils and sketches. So there's a lot of ways to work with stencils and sketches. And I think this is great for creative people. It also can be very, very cost effective. So when I say stencils and sketches, I also say that this includes vinyl. So there's endless pre-made vinyls on the market now. We've all seen them, you know, beautiful stickers for rooms that give us vines or trees or flowers uh, or, or just graphic lines. Um, and you could do the vinyls and reuse them, or you could just draw it right on the surface on your own. It's great for large Spaces if the product can't fold the whole window. So just create a beautiful pattern to give it some depth and interest. You can also create privacy if you want to enclose something and it creates more of a, a VIP shopping experience. And you can sketch on any surface and with any medium. You just want to be sure that what you're using can be removed or covered when you need to. So this is a great idea of some Stenciling. So that uh, on the left hand side is cut vinyl. So that was obviously done on a CNC machine and creates a beautiful feeling. And there's little windows into the fashion beyond. So it really kind of focuses them in, but it gives you that lovely garden bespoke feel with all that detail. And on the right hand side, those trees are either cut out of Bristol board or foam core. So again, very cheap, easy to get at a craft store or a dollar store cut them out, they can't go wrong, layer them in, and they're all flat, so they'll store away nicely. So in that window, they've created a beautiful little scene with a top light. It's very, very festive, but it's drawing your eyes right into those three products on the stump below. Here again, stencils that work very, very well, so more of a lace pattern, creating the idea that you know there is lace in those windows. You would go to a craft store, get the stencil. You could paint that on with the latex-based paint, which would wash off or scrape off afterwards. 
I think this is fantastic, maybe not to everyone's taste, but really going with, you know, animal prints are in. This is what we believe in. So the whole window, it just gives you a glimpse behind. There's also something about, um, you know, the whole concept of that. When, when your kids think about when you couldn't see over a fence or you couldn't see over a hill and you wanted to know what was behind it, this gives you a glimpse and you're, you're kind of intrigued. Well, what, well, what's in there? I've got to go in and see it. A broader version of that, so very spring and fresh, again, back to anthropology, um, window vinyls, just to create that kind of ethereal, fresh, to go with the bohemian clothing that it's showcasing behind. And this is uh, painted right on glass, so that would be a glass marker. So they've created that jacket and that hat rack and then just used some kind of a double-sided hook to hold the hat and the uh, jacket on the other side. They've painted the bench. It's uh, very one-dimensional, but it looks very two-dimensional. It's very, very clever. So again, stencils and sketches, they can be tape. Uh, I find electrical tape is a great thing to use because it's low adhesive. It doesn't leave a lot of mess. So with painter's tape, you just want to be careful of any tape left in windows too long. The heat will, of course, erode it. Um, paint, markers, chalk, et cetera. Um, adhesive vinyls in all shapes and sizes, and that doesn't necessarily need to mean custom. There's lots of that available on the market ready to go. And whiteboard or glass markers also provides a perfect place to mess around. So dollar store delights. This is one of my favorite sections because when we're doing the windows for our can gift in the feature areas, we have, um, of course, like everybody, we have a budget that we have to work within. And the dollar stores have become so great now at their product offerings and innovative little things that we're always in and out of them. So here are some of the benefits of a dollar store shopping spree. It's full of items that can be bought in bulk and they can be repurposed, reused, painted or deconstructed. Because they're so affordable, it, you're not feeling like you're investing a lot in something that has to be used over and over again or that you don't want to change. They are usually cheaper than a craft store and they're more accessible. So I would tell you from my experience, as much as I love some of those big craft stores, we all know they can be quite pricey. So check your dollar store first. The reputation of items, no matter how small or ordinary, creates a strong visual interest. So think back to that window I showed you of all of the paintbrushes and how effective that was. Just simple things en masse are really, really effective, and the possibilities are endless. So this is really, really clever. Uh, it incorporates so many things color blocking, spring freshness, but those are all pieces of paper. So all they've done is layered paper over with shingles, which would be very, very cost effective and obviously creates an incredible backdrop. But if you wanted to take that even further, here are windows done with uh, portraits, with masterworks done in post-it notes in the same way. So. I'm sure if you looked online, you would be able to find how to pixelate an image and then recreate it in paper. I mean, that is absolutely magnificent and kudos to the team that created it because it really is a brilliant play on something so simple. But then again, jars for something as a display. We've always got to look at things in, in, in a different light. How would I do this? A shoe is worn on a foot. Well, yes, it doesn't need to be worn on a foot to show it. Put it into a glass jar, hang it from the ceiling, uh, throw it on a shelf. Just look at items that create some interest and some difference and see how they work for your products. These don't have to be shoes, but glass jars could have pieces of jewelry. Um, it gives them kind of a behind glass, a very expensive, exclusive feeling. Or you put in little um, toys and they become little enclosed worlds for children's things. They're whatever you want them to be. Back to the paintbrushes. A bunch of paintbrushes from the dollar store all dipped in different colors and hung from string. Of course, there's time involved in this, but the cost would be negligible. I love this image because it is a mannequin, but it is all housewares. So uh, it's napkins and tea trivets and uh, all kinds of home linens to create the bust. But then the skirt is done with spatulas and the um, 
top is done with spoons and it showcases all of the colors that that product comes in in a really different way. So again, someone has thought, mm, I, you know, we sell housewares, but I'm not going to put them on a table or in a bowl. I'm going to put them on a mannequin. And that's really interesting. That's a great choice. Suspended honey. Now, the beautiful thing about this is uh, when the light plays through that, that would just create the most beautiful golden glow. So even food, we think, oh, I'm not going to put food in the window. Well, honey wouldn't be that expensive. And depending on the length of time it was there and the exposure, you could still consume it after the fact. Very, very affordable. Marshmallows, they're so cheap to get. They'll dry out nicely. You put them all on string. They become, is it a candy story? Is it a snowball story? Is it about winter season? Because, um, or is it about fall? Because it's about roasting marshmallows. It's whatever you want it to be. It just creates an affordable backdrop and some really interesting texture. And there's really very little um, as affordable um, as balloons. So balloons come in every color, countless sizes and shapes. So just filling up those windows with balloons, I'm sure, I mean, what would that have cost? A grand total of $5? Uh, very, very effective. And again, they're so affordable. You blow them up, you fill the window, you use them until they start to deflate, and then you pop them all and there's nothing to get rid of. Here's something that you probably already have, which is um, paper tote bags. So they've used different sizes of bags to indicate a holiday season. So they've built a Christmas tree. So one simple broomstick in a base and all of those bags layered around it, beautiful, beautiful effect. So remember, there's an endless selection. It's affordably priced and they're especially effective uh, around different seasons and holidays because they bring in these things en masse so you can get a holiday window for very little cost. DIY. Now we all know what that means, it's do it yourself, but I like to call it adult arts and crafts. So these projects may take more time, but overall may lower the cost of your project. So when you're working on these things, it's how much time you want to put into it. I often find a small project very relaxing at the end of the day. I find it mindless and I like to create with my hands. So maybe this is something you want to do uh, after your work day in front of the television. You can find items at thrift stores and in your own home. There's, you can repurpose recyclables or ask for friends and family. There's always stuff that can be reused. This is great. So newspaper, how much newspaper ends up in the recycling bin on a daily basis? I know as we go digital, that's getting less and less, but there's still newspaper around. So back to your layered newsprint and then just paint right over top. They've gone with one simple color. It's very childlike, it's very primitive, but it's very, very effective and creative. Chances are the majority of the products that are shipped to you are coming in cardboard boxes. So here's all that cardboard cut out with images and sketches of products that are available, or maybe they're not. Maybe you're pushing something else. Maybe you're just pushing the concept, but cardboard comes all the time and we think of it as recycling and nothing else and here it has provided a beautiful backdrop for artwork. So pine cones. Um, I know I do live in Toronto but we still have our green spaces here and when I'm walking um, you know in a park or along the water line or sometimes in my neighborhood where there's mature trees there's always these kind of things on the ground and you know a plastic bag in the right place and the right time of year you could get all of this for free and then just dip them in paint. It costs you nothing. It takes a little bit of time um, and something really, really effective and different comes out of it. Clothespins, so cheap. Available at a dollar store. You may have buckets of them around, uh, all painted the same color, just hanging. It's a beautiful, beautiful effect. Pom-poms, again, uh, really kind of crafting and fun. They do come at dollar stores, I have seen them, so stringing them on um, could be a great activity for you and your family if you find that kind of thing fun. But again, it's very affordable and it's just a really whimsical approach to a window. And so this is a particularly favorite image of mine because yes, it's fashion and it's great and it's white and when you look at it, you realize that they're tires. And it would not be our first instinct to look at tires and say, hmm, I know what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put those in a fashion window. But here they are painted white and they're all holding fruit and flowers and all of a sudden it's built a really, really interesting story because 
maybe those tires are actually swing and maybe it's a beautiful summer day and here's what you should be wearing when you're out in the park on that tire swing. I love this story. So cutlery, the interesting thing for me about this is not the cutlery on its own though, it's that the entirety of the cloud above it has been made with styrofoam cups. So, so affordable, so mundane, but so easy to create something beautiful and graphic and effective. Crates as well. This is the kind of thing that when the holidays come around and everyone's eating clementines, I'm always keeping all those little crates for some project and they get painted or they get stained or they get trimmed out and they become a shelf or a storage caddy or I use them to gift baskets in. But here they are suspended, very simple and very, very effective. Now, of course, the whole movement of um, bunting becoming so popular and Edison bulbs and that very crafted feeling. A package of construction paper cut on into V's, you could make this in no time. And it's such a fun, fun window and so bright and cheery. So remember, DIY can turn your trash into treasure. You're dealing with things that you may be throwing out. So upcycle what you have. And the best thing about this, nothing ventured, nothing gained. If you cover a window in newspaper that you were going to recycle and use an old can of paint that you had in the garage ready to throw out and it didn't work out, it's only your time that suffers. Hooks and hardware. So they're pleasing to the eye because they look organized and purposeful. They're great for continuity. Uh, the eye is also drawn to items that are suspended from the ceiling and hooks can hold all types of items and they're cost effective and they work really well with the industrial look that's so hot right now. So some great industrial hooks done on a flat ribbon, suspending a hat, really, really beautiful. But think of the things that you already have. You have hangers, so a bit of spray adhesive and some glitter or some sequins. You could make some really effective hangers to show some pieces on. We kind of poo-poo pegboard because it's brown and it's press board and it's old and it's dated. But look how effective it is here, especially with the millennial movement and how things are moving in that design direction. Paint it white. It's not all jammed in. It's very organized. The colors are bright and fun, and it looks really, really fresh. So it's a great option. It's very, very flexible. There's some hooks suspended from a ceiling. Again, just some simple hooks on black twine um, and a row of jackets. Really, really beautiful effect for fashion and really sells with that wooden backdrop. It sells that outdoor um, getting colder story. So this is fun. I don't know if anyone had one when they were a kid, but I know I did. <coughs> Excuse me. One of those um, 70s pieces of art with all the little nails and you drag all the thread around it and change the colors and it was all 3D and my father would let me cut it all off and change it all the time. Well, it's basically a giant version of that. So yarn is so cost effective. You don't even really need the hooks. Those could just be cup hooks screwed into the window ledge and then anchored into other hooks or brackets above. Really, really great idea. So remember the hooks are multi-purpose and they're reusable. So you can use them over and over again in different applications, mounted from the floor, hung from the ceiling, stuck on a wall. Uh, they can be anywhere and they're very functional for mounting different things. So graphic things. So graphics are a great way. They, they can tell us different things. It's eye-catching, it's bold, and we don't have to use the word sale, it can tell a story. Graphics don't have to be words, they can be interesting patterns without letters or numbers, but you can also use favorite quotes or poems because that's a great way to immediately say what you want to say. So out with the old, in with the new. You could print this off on paper or heavier cardstock, print it at home and just cut it out and hang it with S hooks. Or here's giant letters that would be cut out of foam core or um, big sheets of Bristol board, and then you just put them right in the window. I think it's just so different and so effective and so simple. This, of course, is a much more elaborate version of that, but there's that Superman graphic. So you can see this is all layered and actually built out. This would be a much more complicated, but the idea is that um, 
you could do this with tape stripes. You could just tape the black lines in electrical tape, and the electrical tape comes in multiple colors, layer it over itself to create different looks. Using one word, there's the superheroine's foot in a stiletto, um, really giving it a pow. And the back wall is all dots. Now, all of these business centers have endless supplies of colored dot stickers. So you find them online. That would be a fabulous, easy way just to create a backdrop. And then you could control how dense or how uh, thin you wanted it to be. So again, a play on that repetition, still more of that. And remember that graphics can be cardboard, paint, vinyl, or basically anything. Wallpaper also works wonders. It's very, very affordable. You don't need to uh, properly install it. You can double-sided tape up. And tape used to create lines and graphics is very, very effective. So holiday windows. Now these, of course, are very important. They're big sales times for us. And we want to make sure that we're making the biggest impact so we can compete uh, with everything that's happening out there. So holidays can focus on a color theme, uh, which we've talked about, so that you know it's very easy to indicate what Valentine's is with red or pink. Holidays evoke emotions and make us reflect. So we're reflecting and we're romanticizing and we're reminiscing. So all of those happy memories put us in a better place um, because they really set the tone for why someone is shopping because we're probably shopping for someone else and we want to get them something that's meaningful and important and the story that you're telling in the window is going to help draw them in. Um, a few pumpkins or a stack of Valentine's Day cards are a cost-effective way. So although I love very full holiday windows, they don't need to be completely over the top to be effective. So here's a perfect example. Some fishing line, some leaves. Those look to me to be artificial leaves, so you could buy a spray of leaves at a dollar store and pick them off. Uh, it would be totally fine to pick them right off the sidewalk. Just thread them through, and it's a beautiful fall, cozy up. There's your, your warm, tall boots. There's your hat and your scarf. It's really all about bundling up and layering for the fall. This is an Easter window. So instead of the baskets of eggs, they're suspended as lanterns. Very, very cute and just a different play, but it immediately, with the egg shape, it immediately says Easter. And here's the love window for Valentine's. I, I think this is a great idea. These are done in full-size cards. You could go to a dollar store or a paper store, buy all the cards in those colors, and just put the exactly what they've done there. Tape them right to the window. It's not expensive. It couldn't be more clear what we're celebrating, and it's really, really sharp. Again, here's using your product. So they've, you've got shelves. Well, it's Valentine. Well, we don't have a lot of red and pink, but we've, we've got a lot of orange. Um, and this is how we're going to sell it. We're going to do a heart shape. We're going to build a heart shape out of product on the shelves. So the shape itself is really indicative of what the season is. This is great for um, one of the American holidays. So the American flag all done in Chuck Taylor. So there it is. It's all your product. It's just one banner. You could do this, of course, with a Canadian flag. You could do this with any flag if you had the product that worked in the color. So again, there's a, a bunch of product that is not necessarily Christmas or festive, but we stack it in the shape of a tree and we put a star on the top and it's selling the Christmas holidays. So cut out things. These are cut out of plywood, but again, we talked about the ones that could have been done uh, earlier in the foam core or Bristol board. So just layering all of those things over. A tree doesn't have to be um, a green Christmas tree. It can be cut out of cardboard, cut out of wood. It can be taped on a wall. It can be the outline, and it immediately tells us that it's the holidays. So remember, they don't need to be traditional to be effective. Don't think that Valentine's needs to be all about hearts, or Christmas needs to be all about trees. There's other ways to do it. You inspire people to buy for others when your windows are effective, and a little can go a long way. So thank you very much for taking the time to listen to this. I hope you found it informative and interesting, and even maybe a little bit entertaining. So please don't hesitate to pass your feedback on to CanGift. We'd love to hear what you thought of this. It would be important for us to know if you want to see more in the future or the types of presentations that you're looking for. So on behalf, on behalf of everyone here, thank you so much. This is Andrew Pike signing off. I look forward to meeting you at the next show.